Hello, can you hear me? <laughs> so, once again, I will be talking about uh, Globe Python. Uh, uh, sometimes I call this Globe, so I'm actually referring to Globe, but the same thing. Uh, this is a Python package that is uh, that gives word vectors, just like what uh, has been discussed on the like, ABCs on natural language processing. This is part of it. Uh, this is a specific algorithm that would give you the word embedding. So we, uh, the ones that you see uh, from the previous slides on TFIDF, it's the same. It's, it's, it will generate the same thing, but using a different algorithm. So this is useful in natural language learning and information retrieval. And there are already several algorithms that uh, builds these word vectors or word representations. Uh, for instance, word 2 vec as uh, stated a while ago, and some neural networks, uh, LST, MRNNs. But this one is a simpler version of, uh, of this uh, building these word vectors. You don't have to, to do deep learning for this. This is a mixture of using probabilities and counts. And uh, it may be simple, but it is actually get giving good results as what those sophisticated algorithms show. So, I'll be covering today uh, to give you a, what is GLOBE, to give you an overview of the math behind this algorithm and training your own word vectors using Python. So this is where Glob Python comes in. There's an implementation of Glob by Stanford, but it's not written in Python. And I'm a Python user, so this is very helpful for me that I found this package already been done. And a real-world application where uh, I share a project that I once worked uh, on that uses this Glob Python package and uh, apply this to the healthcare space. So GLOB stands for Global Vectors. Uh, GLOB is an algorithm developed by Jeffrey Pennington, Richard Soher, and Christopher Manning at Stanford University, cited below. And this algorithm takes a uh, co-occurrence matrix and predicts the surrounding words by maximizing the probability of a context word occurring given the center word uh, via a lot by linear model, which I will be showing later, and uh, with a weighted list squares objective. So, for example, as uh, you can see right there, uh, we have the the sentence sentences. I love programming. I love math. I tolerate biology. In this case, uh, this algorithm will take this matrix that uh, counts occurrences of words but different from the tf idea is that you have this document and then count the, the, the vocabulary and then you have this counts of instances now in this uh count matrix you will have uh, for example take the word love and you only count the occurrence of uh, uh words that surrounds love like in this instance only the uh, word before first word before and after that, uh, after the word love, then we say that uh, this word is a context of love. So that is how it's written. So the dimensions of the matrix that you will first read here is like the unique number, uh, unique words that you have and unique, and the unique words by unique words, number of unique words, unique words. words. Okay, so this is how the, this is the, of the probability cost function that we're trying to minimize in this, uh, this problem. Globe is, uh, and then you can see there, uh, this is, so you can, uh, for the terms, I is the central word and J is the context word. So for all words in the vocabulary, we take the sum of the weighted function f of x sub ij times the square of the product of the central and the context word of the vectors plus the biases and minus the log of x sub ij. So 
Uh, also, in this f of x, this is where we can tweak this uh, function so that we can give less importance on some words and more importance on some rare words. For example, stop words. Uh, we, this is where we, we, we say that if this word occurs n times, then we consider this as stop words in the, in the whole corpus in stop words. And in, so basically, the concept of GLOB is that there are already linguistic relationships between words. So when uh, there are, for example, as shown there, it's not so clear, but there is a mapping between uh, terms that are for males, terms that are for females. For example, uh, man to woman, king to queen, uh, daughter to sons. So these, uh, there's a structure in language. And also in, uh, there's another example there, there's a, so a comparative superlative uh, relationship where you have a slower, a slow, slower, slowest. Uh, those verb and like adjective transformation. So there's, there's a structure behind the, the language. It's just that uh, we, we don't know how we can measure, quantify them this structure so word embedding does that and how so we can think about uh, the resulting so we have this big matrix from a while ago uh, this one this is a huge matrix if you have a huge corpus globe is uh, is a dimension we can think of globe as a dimensionality reduction method so it will try to uh, to reduce this big matrix into some n-dimensional space where where it, it can be interpretable with a, a and so for example if we're given these terms ice and steam and we think about the rows of this uh, table right here as the terms that we are training on and the columns as uh, properties of the many words. In this case, ice and steam, we can we can just think about the properties that they contain. They could they could have it could be classified or uh, the property of ice could be uh, could have solid. It, and then there are some properties. So, uh, these are properties like gas, water, and some other random uh, properties. So this is the dimension of our matrix. And then another word, steam, also have those properties of the columns, but uh, not everything. So now, when a word, so for example, if we just take ice and steam, that's uh, if the, since ice have this property of solid, then the value of that, uh, of, of the ice on that dimension is large and since it has a small, it doesn't have any like some. It has a relation, but just a little relation between the property gas, and it will have a small value, and so on. Steam will have a small value in solid and large value in gas, but some other factors it could have like random val values. Now, if we take a word that has that co-occurs with this word steam and ice, get the ratio of its embedding value then the values that or the properties that these words actually uh, actually possess will accentuate and the other other properties that it does not have or it has but uh, in a large scale like this one here uh, this word that had the focus with ice and steam shares property or did uh, with water but did not share on properties with uh, with random property. So these two, uh, if this term uh, is very common, will share this common properties or do not share this common properties with these two co other occurring words, then they will just cancel out. And what's left is the properties that uh, the properties that matters basically. Uh, so. It's, it's uh, this uh, globe is, I'm quite amazed, amazed with this 
package because uh, uh, in, it is scalable and uh, easy to understand because it's just co-occurrence metrics and probabilities. So let's dive into uh, the package used to, to train this. So we don't have to think about the, the math anymore of the, that because there's already this Globe Python. You can just pip install it, uh, Globe Python, and import the following classes, Globe and Corpus. So Corpus is the one, is the class that would turn our raw text into those count matrices, <coughs> the ones that I showed you a while ago, the count matrix, which we will then feed to the model. So right here, what I did was just to create this package that would take raw text, that the raw text there is the data slash articles that text, it's just a collection of of articles from different web, uh, different news sites. And I just did a little cleaning with this text file. So just removing special characters, nothing so fancy. But uh, in your own application, if you want to get uh, N words, uh, N grams, Y grams, trigrams, or uh, some or do some lemmatization or stemming, you can also do so. It depends on how clean you want, uh, how, what kinds of words that you want to train with. So then we instantiate the, the corpus class and feed, feed our, our text, the clean text, to the, to the model of, like, th that creates this matrix. And you can see there in, uh, there's a, in the line corpus model that fit get data and there's a window of 10. So the window of 10 is the one that will will say how many, so this is my central word and how many words before, before and after my central word should I consider or should I remember to be the context of that central word. And so when we get this matrix done, uh, we then feed it to to be trained by the Glob algorithm. We'll do these optimizations in behind the hood. Uh, actually, this is Glob Python. I forgot to mention that this is implemented in Cython, so it is fast. So it is possible to train your model like bigger corpus on this uh, implementation. And so here, uh, I instantiate Glob and assigned as parameters, assigned 100 as the number of components or the dimension of your embedding and the learning rate when uh, it, this is for the SGD optimization. And then next, fit, fit it with the, with the matrix that we have. And you can have uh, multiple threads for multiprocessing. And also, add dictionary will be this is just a function where you, we can have a dictionary to pop. For example, you're given a word, and you will be given this word embedding corresponding to that word. And of course, after training your model, which would depend on how big your corpus is, it will take some time, so you don't want to do it again. So you can just save it. There's also a function for saving the model. And in loading the model, you can just call load also. They have a prepared function for that. And also, you can load pre-existing word em uh, vectors or embeddings. So uh, Stanford has done this study, has done run this algorithm already, and has built their own word vectors. It's, it could be downloadable, downloaded in their, in their site. Uh, for example, I take the word embedding vectors from Stanford. I just call load Stanford, and we have the glove, uh, glove algorithm trained word vectors that they have, which is which has been trained for six billion tokens and when, uh, 200 dim uh, it has two dim uh, 200 dimensions in the vector. And how to get the the corresponding vector of our of our word, 
we just use the dictionary lookup that we have a while ago. So when we say here Stanford and Dictionary and Woman, we get the index because the output of the of globe algorithm is a huge matrix of number of vocabulary times the uh, number of dimensions. So you will have, if you want to look for a word, then you input that word to this dictionary and it will give you an index as to where it will be found on that matrix. So this is what this line is doing. So it's just a snippet, it's a 200 dimensional word that I just, I'm just showing there, uh, pen. And then you can use this nice function that they have on most similar. So you can input just for for this case, for this function, they only have one word, so we can input a word, and then it will do behind the hood cosine similarity between this, the, the inputted word, and other the, all other words that you have in your in your matrix. So what we have there uh, for a woman, it is closely related to girl, mother, man, and she, which is quite quite good. Because yeah, it's it's also and by the way, this Stanford uh, embedding was trained on Wikipedia articles. Uh, Wikipedia articles are are downloadable. They have a link to the dumps, latest dumps of articles, which you can you can play around if you have time. So now, how there's this? So how? Do we, could we actually perform mathematical operations on this vector? So now this is what I'm going to show. This famous analogy that uh, in the machine learning uh, natural language processing uh, uh, field, we always find this uh, very classic example of man is to woman is to, and king is to what? So, what happens there? So to, to perform, so since we have this vectors already, then we can, we can translate this, this analogy into a mathematical equation. And how to translate it, it could be written as king minus man plus woman is equal to queen. If, if we think about it, it makes sense, right? So, uh, common trait uh, like king, monarchy, and this is referred to a man. If we just, if, what if I want to know what is the woman version? So subtract woman from that combination of the monarchy, so you get queen. How to do this? So now we take, to do this, we take the word embedding of king. In this case, we're just showing in two dimensions because it's it is the one that could be visualized. Take the word embedding of king, take the word embedding of man, and then also for the for woman, take those word embeddings, and then perform the mathematical mathematical operations. If you plot it, so king king word embedding will be at 0.3 and 0.7, and man would be at 2, uh, 0.2 and 0.2. Woman would be at 0.6 and 0.3. Now when we do these operations, we hope that the word vector or the word, the point, let's just think of it as a point, will fall into the, ideally it should be the embedding of queen, but that's not really the case. So what will happen is that instead of like getting the, we, we then after this operation, because we will have different word vectors, you will, we won't get the exact number or the exact embedding of the queen. But if we get this vector, then we can perform cosine similarity. What is the most, what is the closest uh, vector to this point or this vector with the other words that we have? So how did, how to do that? So I did, uh, I created a simple uh, function right here that would like, that would do what I have described a while ago. So it will take positive, uh, positive terms, terms that you want to add, and then terms that you want to subtract to like the analogy. So, and then uh, uh, when you get this positive and negative vectors, so 
in training you won't actually have negative vec uh, negative vectors. So what we'll, we will do is that for since we will be subtracting here man, then you take the word embedding of man sub and multiply it, negate it. So that's the negative vector of it. And uh, take everything and then get the mean of this this vectors, these three vectors. After you get the mean of these three vectors, then you do the cosine similarity, like that product of the matrix and this mean vector. After that, uh, once you get this uh, vector, you then just see uh, or rank together where, where, what are the terms that are closest to this vector. So I have, I'm showing here three examples, interesting examples of of how it uh, it's doing. Uh, first example is uh, positive. I don't have any negative words there. I just want to see if what will be the the resulting words of these two different words with different meaning. Uh, I know uh, initially before I I use this terms that Pearl Jam is a band name, and if you think about it, Pearl. Could be so and jam is not closely is not associated to each other. Pearl is for maybe jewelry. Jam is food. But interestingly, if you add those vectors, and I did not teach or I did not do deep learning to to make it learn that it is a rock band. So you will see if you add those vectors and get the closest uh, terms or word vectors to that mean you see that it is nirvana album delta song and even better it's getting the like the vocalist of this band it's uh pretty cool for me and uh about the famous example that we have a while ago king the king plus man minus oh I'm not sure social anymore. <laughs> so king minus man plus woman. So we translate it as we add the vectors of, uh, you get the vectors of uh, representation of those words and get the mean. Then we, the top result is actually queen. Quite, quite good. And another one, another analogy is uh, for the capital city and country. So we have, this is the corresponding uh, this right third example is the analogy between uh, Paris is to France, Germany is to what, and interestingly, it's outputting Berlin. There are several examples that I have I cannot show you anymore, but uh, with just Glob, uh, you can find this cool relationships uh, of words. Now. <coughs> Now I'll show you uh, some a, a work that I have done before that uses this uh, globe Python in healthcare space. It's not really it. I consider it is as natural language processing, but this is not English anymore. This is codes. So this is a healthcare uh, application. So I have I have a. I have an information or data of about 80,000 80, individuals about uh, their diagnosis and their procedures within a, some like three, five years, I think five years span of data of their proced the procedures that they have undergone through and their diagnosis for each day. So what I did is to, oh, by the way, uh, before forgetting, this is a study that uh, I uh, already have been done by David Kachner and et al. called Code to Vec Embedding and Clustering Medical Diagnosis Data. Sorry, I tried to replicate it, but just adding some more other tweaks in, in my implementation. And so instead of training text, that you can see English text. This my corpus is uh, codes, medical codes, procedure and diagnosis codes in sequence. And what I did is to 
feed this data into the globe algorithm so that for each code I would have an embedding or a vector that corresponds to this code and see if I was wondering if I could actually see relationship of diseases because these codes will correspond to diseases. So now after feeding that, the second table that you can see, the last or uh, the first column, you will see an embedding, corresponding embedding, and this is uh, for this case I just used 25 dimension for the word embedding. And embedding for the corresponding medical code. And there, you can also see a description of that code and also AHRQ. AHRQ is uh, like a general categorization of, proceed, of procedures and diagnosis. So general category of diseases, for sure. And now what I did is to get the, I want to investigate, I tried to investigate uh, some diseases and see some relationships and to do that I, I used k means clustering so for each uh, for each AR, AHRQ there are uh, it, since it's a categorization so I will have uh, the, the codes will be categorized on those AHRQ and now if uh, I get the me I, I try to get the mean of uh, the embedding uh, mean of all the codes that belongs to the same category so that I would say that if this is the mean vector of this category of this general category and then plot it to space and I did that for all the categories I run k-means by initializing to the number of general disease categories and then initialize also the centroids of the k-means as the mean mean vector of this age of, of these categories and see how it goes now I, I i tried to investigate the the disease diabetes so this is how it's messy <laughs> this is how uh, it looks like so i i tried to see the disease uh, diabetes so i query all from the table that i have before i query all the medical codes related to diabetes and then so that I will have this mean mean vector of the disease of the disease and after that I look at what are the closest clusters produced by uh, k-means and see if there's a relationship between diabetes and those clusters uh, this is an example of what uh, what's found so in the uh, first cluster, the, the closest cluster to the mean of the, diab of the diabetes vector, let's say, is uh, closely related to diabetes and colon cancer. So there is an, uh, a link or comor uh, we would I would say that uh, from what the, mo the, the k-means have discovered that Diabetes is closely is comorbid or close uh, closely related to uh, seizures and colon cancer. And I I'm not sure about this, so I tried to look up if that's really true. And I saw this find in our studies below that says there's even uh, a link there that says diabetes and colon cancer an emergent link. So it's not very popular yet. But it's like you can see, like the model sees the pattern that this there's something between these two diseases. Why most uh, individuals get this? And another cluster that that is close is uh, the relationship between diabetes and mental uh, mental health disorders. Uh, not very popular again, but try to look up. To those diseases and found that yeah there are really studies that saying that it that this exists this relationship exists and lastly not uh, this is related but I, I think I would say that this cluster is quite uh, chaotic <laughs> there's a lot of mixtures to that uh, but uh, still I can see that diabetes the link of diabetes to this certain diseases that's, that's listed there and I also try to see 
uh, related literature that says that there is indeed like a study about these links. So I think that's uh, all that I have to share for now. And I hope you <laughs> enjoyed this talk. And also one thing, uh, word embeddings, it's important to have a good word embedding that establish this relationship because uh, as an extension to this uh, to this algorithm, you can actually, in deep learning, you can uh, to do uh, prediction of a next word, you need an embedding layer. And what I can see is that you can use this uh, this embedding, uh, the result of love as an uh, embedding layer to your deep learning uh, model so that you can actually predict more interesting results. And even an extension to the study, I am thinking of using this to uh, as an embedding for training uh, disease progression. It, it would be cool, interesting to, to see that. Questions? Okay, um, let's do it this way. First of all, thank you very much for your talk. Um,